Good morning. In the biblical story, it took a small kid to kill a giant. The stone was the game changer. In the Stanford industry, it can take a small FCM larvae to kill the peach and nectarine industry. But monitoring fruit damage is our game changer. So this is the project on monitoring of false cotling moth distribution and damage in peach and nectarine orchards. We know that false cotling moth is a quarantine pest on peaches and nectarines. We also know that oriental fruit moth is a pest on peaches and nectarines, although not a quarantine pest. We also know that the larvae look similar as well as the damage. It's important to understand the flight patterns for FCM because this is what's going to help you to understand your trap data. FCM is active at dusk, they don't go into diapause, and they breed throughout the year on host plants. So in 2016-2017, we established a monitoring protocol for FCM on peaches and nectarines. We did the monitoring ourselves in Ceres and in Tilbach, and these are the orchards that we monitored, the cultivars. Some are middle cultivars and some are later cultivars. So we monitored by using a pheromone trap per orchard, by doing scouting every second week, by looking at 25 trees per orchard. We did a damage assessment every second week by like looking at 10 fruit per tree. We did a pre-harvest assessment by cutting five fruit per tree um, at the lab. And then of course the larval identification. Our trap counts in the August red orchard um, we started monitoring the beginning of November and we caught few moths. We did a harvest in end of January and we got no damage. But since then, the trap data, the trap numbers started to increase. Why? Because when we looked at the flight patterns, we saw that they don't go into diapores and they breed throughout the year. Therefore, it is extremely important to know your orchard history and the surroundings and location of the FCM population because FCM has an extensive host range. In 2017-2018, we collected data from various orchards. We collected fruit FCM trap data as well as fruit damage assessment data. We collected data from Ceres, Wolseley, Paul, Tolbach, Ribia Castile and Limpopo. This is just the number of orchards that we collected the data from. In total, about 140 orchards. All of these orchards had different control strategies. Some had FCM mating disruption, some had OFM mating disruption, and some had no mating disruption. The results showed that no FCM were caught in orchards under FCM mating disruption. We caught moths um, in OFM mating disruption orchards, we caught moths in no mating disruption orchards, but most importantly, we had no FCM damage in any of these 140 orchards. So to summarize, low to no trap catches in the FCM pheromone treated orchards. There were no correlation between the trap counts and the damage on the stand fruit. Remember, your trap counts for FCM tells you if FCM is present or absent in that area. It's important to know the difference between the OFM and the FCM larvae. And damage assessments are important. Remember, damage assessments are our game changer. Thank you.